Well, the relatively new and fresh chief executive here at the ROA is Charlie Liverton. Uh, Charlie, you've just had time now to bed into the role. Uh, how have you enjoyed it so far? I've loved every minute of it. Um, I say that um, there are elements that are certainly more confusing uh, than others. But in the main, as I said last year, my initial thought was that, that actually we are a very collegiate uh, industry. And whilst we do have our moments of disagreement, uh, in the main, they're constructive. Um, and I think what's been born out of today's AGM is that actually we are making progress. To some it may not be as much progress as they would like, but progress is being made. And if we can all stick together and keep rowing in the same direction, then actually there are benefits for all of us stakeholders. Um, and hopefully, as, as Steve Harmon's just alluded, the next 12 to 18 months potentially might see some, some really big changes for all of us. In what areas have you made progress? So, I suppose the big area this year has been around the fixtures and funding process and the ring fencing of in the region of £8 million that's going to be delivered straight to the grassroots prize money, class four, five and six. Again, it had industry backing. There was not a single member of that uh, uh, table that disagreed with that principle. It was a case of how do we deliver that to the industry through the prize money mechanism. We worked our way through it. And, and as of January the 1st next year, uh, there'll be an extra 8 million going, going down there. We as an organization learnt a lot from the owner's survey, um, not just about the ROA ourselves, but the expectations from race courses, the expectations from trainers, the expectations of being an owner, and what does that mean to British racing as a, as a whole. What were, what were the key points you took away from that? What did you really feel that owners weren't being delivered with that they ought to be being delivered. There were fundamentally there were outside of the prize money which I've alluded to there were two things. One was communication and it doesn't matter what strand you fall into as an industry we don't communicate in a manner that is particularly engaging or informative or, or um, up to speed and what we found is that actually our infrastructure just isn't built at the moment. We're spending a lot of time and money putting together new databases and new website in order to get us to a level where we will be able to, to communicate um, in a much more efficient way. Um, the other thing was the race day experience and what that actually means to owners as a whole, not just the new owner, but also the owner that's well seasoned. Actually, when, when you look at the results of the survey, they want different things, albeit there is a standard of expectation that they expect when they go racing. The race courses have taken this on board and we're having some really constructive conversations with them at the moment to make the change, not just to put a sticking plaster over things. We're going to have to roll it out over the mid to long term. There's a bit of low hanging fruit, but actually there's some quite big changes that are going to have to take place. The ROA are leading that ownership piece with the industry. And again, hopefully we'll see some, see some change in the next, certainly six to 12 months, but the bigger changes in, the, in 12 to 24 months. Which sector of ownership do you think needs most love, most encouragement? Well, to be honest with you, the breadth of ownership. I, I'm saying to a, to a member today, as if I was going racing today as a race goer, and I have an opportunity to buy one of four different badges lunch overlooking the course or a general admission badge and something in the middle. As an owner, whether I'm a sole owner, whether I'm a syndicate member, whether I'm in a partnership with four friends, I get the choice of one badge. That's it. And that one badge provides me with a facility that I may or may not like, may or may not want to go into, and that one badge gets me into the paddock. And actually, I might want to go and have lunch in a restaurant overlooking the course, but I didn't know my horse was running until the day before, and when I ran the course, there were no tables left because of the, the, the marketing that they had done around, around that to their race goers. So actually it's across the, the breadth and it's a case of understanding what the different ownership structures are looking for and trying to get race courses to provide that platform in order for when they do go racing, they have a choice of what, what they would like to, uh, to do. And is the ROA's own position within the political framework of the sport more powerful now than it was two years ago? Absolutely. The, the Racing Authority has really brought things um, to a head and the ROA is very much leading 
uh, in many areas in, in that regard. We take a leading role on the Horsemen's Group. Um, I sit on the executive committee with, Steve, with Nick Rust um, and with Stephen Atkin of the Racecourse Association. And yeah, the RRA really is at the forefront of, of some of these big changes um, and delivering, hopefully, yes, the owner is the center of what we do, but actually we've got to better the industry as a whole and take us all forward in order for a lot of these benefits for owners to, to come to realization. Charlie, thank you very much.